I have issues because about two or three years ago, I went to the Maui Derm and saw a lecture by Jerry Shapiro about alopecia, androgenetic alopecia, male pattern baldness. Ever since then, I've been like asking people, I see like a little balding or a little thinning of hair. I'm like, uh, can I help you with your scalp? Watch out because I am throwing the question out there. And if they say, no, I don't want to, great. But if they want it, which most want to at least chat about it, I am there for them. So androgenic alopecia, male pattern baldness, um, this is a common, common thing that we see and that we can help. So what happens, the quick version is that um, hair because of signals from the body, which is dihydrotestosterone, DHT, which is a, a, a byproduct of the testosterone, um, it goes and it like tells the hairs to miniaturize or to diminish or to fall out in certain areas, which is mostly here and here. That's the main reason that this is happening. And this is a genetic programmed thing. So if you have the genetics for this to happen, it can, it, it can happen. It can happen in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s. These are the prime decades for it can happen. It can happen in your late teens, but it is so it's pretty freaking rare. So the very best stuff out there for alopecia or androgenic alopecia for male pattern baldness is oral pills. The best two these days, there was just this meta-analysis done in 2022, and it found that the very best one was dutasteride, uh, 0 0.5 milligrams. So dutasteride is a, um, is a cousin to finasteride. Finasteride, and these are blockers of DHT. So finasteride has been studied and approved for male pattern baldness, and it is a pretty dang safe medicine. I always prescribe finasteride one milligram up until this new evidence from this meta-analysis in 2022, and now I've pretty much switched to dutasteride because it's got way more better evidence for helping either restore hair loss in the vertex scalp and the frontal scalp, or it helps um, to stop the loss of hair in these areas. Second best thing to take is oral minoxidil, 2.5 milligram pills if you take um, two a day. So what is minoxidil? Minoxidil, Rogaine, we've been using topically forever. Carl Malone was using Rogaine back in the day when it was part of the commercials. The on-label instructions for Rogaine were to use twice a day and to use it both here and here. The biggest side effects for that were Ironic, ironically, were paradoxical hair loss at the beginning. So you get a little hair shedding at the beginning. So people would freak out and stop and say, hey, I'm not using Rogaine because it makes me lose my hair. But really that's a temporary thing. It's just like um, taking those hairs that are already gonna fall out in the next month and like loosening them quick. So it feels like, you know, this is accelerating the problem rather than um, helping the problem. So the second side effect of topical Rogaine 5% is irritation. So those are the two things that are bug people. The revelation was in 2022, the most read article in dermatology field was the use of oral minoxidil for male pattern baldness. And this is an oldie but a goodie. We've had minoxidil for decades, the, the pill, and it's been used at higher doses for blood pressure. They realized these people that were put on for blood pressure looked like a chia pet after they were taking the pill because they grew their hair so well. So they learned that and so that's when they started doing the topical. It's never been approved for the oral pill to be used for hair loss, but it works. So for females, they start on 0 0.0625, which is basically like a quarter pill and they can titrate up to 2.5 milligrams a day. And that's if you have female pattern loss. So for males, I start with um, 1.25, which is half a pill a day. And then in a week, we, talk, we go up to 2.5 milligrams a day, which is one full pill. And then if they want, they can go up to 2.5 twice a day, 2.5 in the morning, 2.5 at night. So five milligrams is kind of the, the upper dose of minoxidil. And that is number two on the list. The next couple things on the list were 5% topical minoxidil. And then you got down to finasteride, one, one milligram finasteride. These are cheap medicines. I like to make it a convenient thing so people don't have to constantly be go worried about going to the store and they can get improvement 
and they can get hair regrowth or really maintain their hair. And I say, hey, in five, 10 years, if you're like, I'm done, I don't wanna take any medicine anymore, no problem. Eventually your scalp over the next six months to a year, your hair on your scalp will catch up to where you would have been had you not been taking the medicine. So it's not like it will accelerate the hair loss even though it might feel that time, feel like that for the six to 12 months after, but it's basically catching up to where you would have been had you not been doing these medicines. So I tell people, hey, let's do this for six to 12 months. Let's give it a fair shake and see if you're happy. And I bet you nine out of 10 are there in a year and we're talking about it again and we're re-upping it. No labs that need to be done, uh, no real safety thing. Again, these tiny, side effects which are like 1%, 2% for these medicines are very low. And you know, I talk about them, but I feel very confident in prescribing them. Other things for hair loss. So if we go to like number three and four on the list in, in my view, and again, we're not talking about hair transplants, which would be, I guess, the very best, but super expensive in a procedure and what most people really aren't gonna do for now. So if we go to three and four on the list, I probably do PRP is platelet-rich plasma. And basically, you spin down a, a patient's own blood and you pull out the plasma that is um, you know, rich in platelets. And these you use and inject little blebs into the balding area. And there is good evidence that this does help. This nourishes the hair follicles and tends to be, um, and is probably the best evidence for use of PRP right now. Number four on the list of my favorite things for uh, alopecia areata would probably be like a light cap. Light cap, you buy these, they're red light LEDs. You can buy them on Amazon, you can probably buy them from overseas, but um, you put these on for, you know, five to 15 minutes. Usually I tell patients like 10 to 15 minutes a day and they have little batteries and that light um, shines and decreases inflammation, the inflammation that could lead downstream to the loss of hair. And so that's my top four best treatments for androgenic alopecia. I don't know why I'm so passionate about it, but I like that we have these treatments. I like that the first two, the best two that we can get for a good price. And I, I also like because um, we're hair, nail, and skin experts here in dermatology. We're the ones that should be helping these patients with this. And if, if we aren't, they're gonna keep reading online and taking random pills or uh, doing things that probably aren't as helpful for their hair when really this has the best evidence out there. So I uh, hope that helps. Um, glad you stayed tuned for this long uh, talk on alopecia under hair, but it's worth it, especially if, you're ha if you have it or if you have a loved one that has it. Hopefully this helps out.